Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we freaking made it. Uh, here we are for a lot of people around the world. I know not everybody, because this movie, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, still hasn't come out in some territories and regions and countries around the world. So for those of you still waiting, I will say we are going to get into all the spoilers of this movie, minus the post credit scene. So I'm going to save that for a separate video and put it up in a few days. But for now, at least for the movie, I'm going to talk about full spoilers. I don't know how long this is going to go. I'm just going to go off the cuff uh, while the movie is still kind of a little bit fresh in my head, <laughs> at least. And I took a few notes, but I mainly just wanted to have fun with this and finally talk about Venom Let There Be Carnage in full spoilers, because I know like the UK and there's some other places Russia, South America, Mexico, like there's places around the world, I think even Hong Kong, finally has the movie released. But I know there's still people in Australia and other places waiting. So again, if you haven't seen this movie yet and you don't want to hear spoilers, turn away now. But if you don't mind spoilers, as long as we don't talk about the post credit scene, I encourage everyone, don't talk about that scene in the comments. We can talk about everything else. Save that for that video when I put it up in a few days when we talk specifically about the post credit scene. All right, so now without further ado, Let's dive into Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So overall, in my in my uh, non-spoiler review, I gave the movie a 7.5 out of 10. I, I liked it a little bit more than the first one. It still has similar problems to the first one, and we'll get into some of my criticisms of the movie. But I'll kind of start with the positives, at least, and say that just like the first movie, Tom Hardy killed it. He very much is in tune in playing this character. He embodies Eddie Brock very well, and he does a great job with the symbiote and that relationship between the two. And I think that was the whole point. And again, when people go, oh, I don't like this because it's not like the comic or it's not accurate to this or that. There are a lot of comics from the 90s. I know because we've gone over them and a lot of you know because we've gone over them on the show that are very goofy, very silly uh, and uh, don't really take themselves too seriously. And that's clearly the tone these movies went for. They wanted to go for something a little bit more tongue in cheek at times, something that didn't fully take itself too seriously, just to, I think, differentiate itself from all the current comic book movies that go out there. Because there's a lot like DC stuff. Some of their movies are very serious. And then they have some like Shazam that's serious but like fun as well. And then you have like the Marvel stuff which is serious at times and jokey at times and back and forth. So I think for Venom I think they just wanted to go for their own unique style. And that worked with the first movie. At least financially it worked. And a lot of people who like fan wise that saw it seemed to like it. Or general audience members seemed to like it. And it had a high you know general audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. And that's the same thing with this one. The critics, of course, are bashing this movie. And a lot of them saying it's worse than the first one. Some of them are saying it's a little bit better, but not much better. Um, I agree. It's a little bit better than the first one, but not much better. But I still think I like it more than most critics, uh, critics do. Because as a fan, I feel like there's a lot of things they got right. Like I said, the tone um, being like a little bit all over the place, that works for me because... That's a little bit like real life at times. Sometimes you're joking one minute and then you're kind of next thing you know, a bill is due and you're like, OK, I got to get serious now. And that's kind of how this movie is at times. It's a it's a little bit. I don't know. I wouldn't say that's really the tone of the movie, but I think a lot of people identify that as the tone. So I'm just going to say that for their sake is that, you know, there's moments where it's a little jokey, a little serious, a little tongue in cheek, a little not tongue in cheek. Uh, but for the most part, there's more actors in this movie, I feel that are at least on the same wavelength. I think my problem with the first movie was that Tom Hardy was kind of a league of his own. Most other people, minus Dan, I think Dan did a pretty good job in the first movie, uh, played by Reed Scott, and then also uh, Mrs. Chen. And I think those two were probably the most closest to Eddie's wavelength, uh, you know, or Tom Hardy's wavelength, as far as, you know, realizing that, you know, I guess tone the movie's going for, uh, that goofiness, they knew what kind of movie they were in, basically. And you had Michelle Williams and a couple other people like Riz Ahmed and stuff who are great actors and actresses uh, big time. But And I love them both. But I feel like at times they just really didn't match the wavelength that Tom brought to the table. And I think that was the magic of the first movie. This time around, there's a little bit more. There's more actors that are bringing that kind of magic. Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy. I think he does that really well. Um, obviously, Naomi Harris as Shriek. She's very over the top at times and kind of brings that energy. And uh, but not really anyone else again, like I mean, I guess Dan and, and Mrs. Chen, including a scene where Mrs. Chen actually is possessed by the Venom symbiote or bonds with the symbiote. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. So, yeah, I just I love this overall uh, as far as like more than the first one, because there was more actors in this that understood, I think, uh, what Andy Serkis was going for and what Tom was going for. And they kind of got on the same page. I still feel like Michelle Williams at times was kind of the the straight man in a way like she was the one who wasn't as silly and goofy and kind of just played it straight and I guess you need someone to do that for the contrast but at times there was a couple scenes where I'm like 
Uh, I, I wish she was just a little bit having a little bit more fun with this. Um, but there was like a scene in the alley with her and uh, Venom when she gives the suit back to Eddie. That was a little fun, and, and there was a couple moments like that, but not a lot. Not not a lot with her. And then, then again, she's not in the movie a ton either, uh, which is kind of a bummer because you know we we want good things for Eddie, and he still loves Annie. Uh, but this movie is about the new relationship he's in, <laughs> that but the new relationship they're both in because Anne is going to get married to Dan, and Venom and Eddie are partners <laughs> for lack of a better term. So um so yeah, so the movie starts off and we get a flashback. We get to see Shriek and Cletus when they're at uh, St. Estes, which is not a, a school for boys or troubled boys in this one. It seems like a uh, just a place for kids, almost like Deadpool 2, uh, where they had that um, orphanage uh, that I think it was Essex Orphanage, which is a reference to Mr. Sinister, and it had a bunch of troubled teens there with powers. That seems to be the case here. Cletus is getting picked on by other kids in the place. They call him Freak. They call him a bunch of names. And then uh, he meets uh, Shriek, who, or uh, Francis, who kind of comes to his aid one day, and they kind of fall in love at, at a young age. And so the weird thing about the scene, though, because the scene's pretty well done, well shot and everything, but they put Woody Harrelson's voice in, dubbed over, uh, whatever speaking line the kid version of Cletus says, like he's like a teenager version of Cletus, every time he talks, you hear Woody's voice. And every time the young lady who uh, plays, I think who we made a whole episode on actually, because we were debating if she was actually playing a young Shriek, uh, turns out she is. And uh, and she every time she speaks, you hear Naomi Harris's voice. And I thought that was a little weird. I was like, why not just have them two be the voices? Like, what, what do you need? I know Woody has a very distinct voice and, you know, and they wanted to capture that, I guess, in this scene. But for me, I thought that was a creative choice that I didn't really agree with. Uh, I just, I was like, oh, you don't need to do that. And then I think there was a kid uh, played by Delaney, something, last name Delaney, I think. But uh, he, we did a video on him a while ago, and he had a police uniform on and his badge that said, uh, you know, P. Mulligan, uh, Patrick Mulligan. And we thought, oh, maybe he's playing Patrick Mulligan and Stephen Graham is going to play someone else. Well, it turns out that's not the case. This young man is playing young Patrick Mulligan. And then Stephen Graham plays older Patrick Mulligan later, who gets damaged in the beginning of this. He, you know, Shriek is trying to escape using her powers because she's being separated from Cletus. Uh, she has powers he doesn't. So they're taking her to a facility, Ravencroft, that houses people with powers. And so as they're taking her away, uh, you know, Patrick Mulligan is kind of on duty to watch her. And she screams at his ear, uh, making him deaf and shredding parts of his ear. And right before she could kill him, he pulls off a shot with his gun and it goes right into her head and she drops dead, we think. And so does, you know, the character Patrick Mulligan. He thinks he killed her too. And then we cut to present day and we see like Eddie and his relationship with Venom, which is not going so well. They're actually going through a, a lover's, lover's quarrel, I guess. They're going through a bad time because basically Venom wants to be known as the lethal protector. That's He wants to be a superhero and he wants to go around and eat the heads of bad guys and the brains of bad guys. But Eddie's like, you can't, the more pro, you know, I guess the more, um, you know, we go out there and do things and affect the city, then we're going to get the police looking at, you know, for us. We're going to get the FBI probably involved. They're going to take us off to Area 51 or a place like Ravencroft. Like, I, I want to keep a low profile. And Venom's like, no, I need to eat. And if we're, if I'm, and I have to eat brains because there's not enough in chocolate to, to sustain me. And we've been doing it your way for like a year and a half, but I need actual brains to survive. And Eddie's like, no, you can't have brains. I'm not going to let you do it uh, because what you eat, I eat too. And he's like, so you're just going to have to deal with the chocolate. Um, so, but it shows their life just all over the place. And, and picking up where the last movie left off, where Cletus wants Eddie to tell his story, Cletus is kind of baiting Eddie. He's giving him little snippets, but Eddie is not a very good journalist at times. I think he's kind of gotten either lazy or complacent, um, which happens a lot. I think a lot of people uh, don't like to look inward at themselves if they're at a job for a long time and think they get lazy or complacent. But Eddie, I think he's like, all right, I got a second chance here. But the only reason he's actually doing a halfway decent job is because of the symbiote. And then the symbiote even shows, hey, I can help more. Let's get your dumb project done with this Cletus guy. And then let's go eat bad guys. And so that's kind of their relationship. But Eddie is just not having it. Like I said, he doesn't want to be captured or brought into Area 51 or Ravencroft. So he's like, no, you know, we need to keep a low profile. So that's kind of why they're at odds throughout most of the movie. And then meanwhile, Anne is about to get married to Dan. So that's causing some stress on Eddie too, because he wants her back. He even tells her so, but he's like all right I guess I'm happy for you and you know you do have a good guy there I guess he goes but I hate saying this he's like so I'm just gonna leave now and he leaves the restaurant and you know tries to 
deal with all that's going on. Um, he, he's not doing a good job with the story with Cletus. I think in the opening scene, he's talking to uh, Patrick Mulligan, or not the opening opening, but the first time we see Eddie, he's in the police department talking to Patrick Mulligan, who doesn't like Eddie, and he makes it very clear. And Eddie is dealing with the suit, wanting to eat Mulligan. <laughs> so Eddie takes him into the bathroom, the suit in the bathroom, and they go into a stall and start talking and, you know, yelling at each other. And meanwhile, there's this lady in the stall next to them, and who's actually Kelly Marcel's sister, the writer of the movie. It's her sister sitting in the stall next to him. So she put some images, fun images up on Instagram. Um, so right off the bat, again, they're establishing all the relationships. Uh, Cletus really wants to be with Shriek, but he thinks that she could be dead now, or at least the police and everyone do, um, because she got shot. But actually, she's still alive. Francis has grown up. Uh, the wound, the bullet that went into her damaged her eye, but she survived. And she's in a soundproof cell at Ravencroft where the guards basically are taunting her and giving her a hard time and making fun of her and telling her like her boyfriend's going to get executed. Cletus is actually up for lethal injection finally. And and uh, you know, base, you know, so I don't know why they're taunting her like this. They're just showing that everyone at Ravencroft, I guess, are really scummy people that aren't trying to help out. Uh, which, at least in the comics, there was a few good people, and then a lot of scummy people. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. But did we mentioned they mentioned Jameson in the first movie as the sole astronaut that survived that crash. Maybe they'll bring him back, uh, John Jameson, for one of the future movies and have him work at Ravencroft as a security guard. That would be really cool. So uh, so anyway, so that's all the setup. That's basically all the relationships for the most part. Cletus wants to be with Shriek. You know, Venom wants to be with Eddie, but Eddie is, you know, he's not dealing well with this. And at, the more he's getting closer to the symbiote and, and uh, you know, being okay with their life and their lifestyle as like, you know, partners and you know kind of fighting crime and not fighting crime and staying away from the police but helping them to uh to you know track down these bodies that cletus buried before he gets lethal injection there's all these things happening and uh and it's just a lot on eddie and you can see from you know the trailers and the scenes in the movie where he just looks strung out he looks like he's not sleeping he's his apartment's a mess like everything that could be going wrong is and then finally there's a scene in the movie where him and the symbiote break up and, uh, and again, uh, from way back when, spoilers, when I was on the set of the movie, I was talking about how it looked like his motorcycle got ripped in half. And uh, that is exactly what ha ended up happening. Um, so shout out to the people I went to the, uh, to the set with because they were the ones who were mentioning that to me. They're like, hey, there's look at those pieces. Those look like the motorcycle. And I'm like, yeah, and that's what they were throwing at him, uh, you know, up at uh, Tom when he was in the window. So the him and the suit, they get in an argument. Basically, the suit's like, look, you may be the perfect host, but I'll find another one. So he leaves Eddie, you know, uh, separates from him and goes out and there's like a good second, the good portion of the second act of the movie is the suit going from uh, to different hosts. So it actually goes to our friend Otis, who plays Donald the street man. Um, and it goes to him first, uh, which is cool. And you can see him turn into Venom. And then it goes to other people, it goes to Mrs. Chen at one point, which is where uh, Anne finds it and, and brings it back to Eddie by saying like, hey, come join me, uh, you know, Anne, and then we'll go free Eddie from jail. Because right now he's getting interrogated because it looks like he might be involved in Cletus's escape, you know, escape, but it's not true. What happened is Eddie, when he, when he still had the suit, they went to visit Cletus and Cletus was able to grab Eddie and bite his hand, as you saw in one of the trailers, and drink some of his blood. And he's like, wait a minute, I've tasted blood before. That's not blood. And then when Cletus looks at his hand, a couple blood drops went down and, and the blood is mutating and, and moving around like a symbiote. And he licks that up too. So when he does get lethal injection, he's in the chair and they're you know trying to fill him with the chemicals. The suit finally comes to life, pushes the chemicals out of him, turns him into carnage. And then he wreaks havoc and kills everyone at the police department and then finds out because he was using Eddie to get little subliminal messages out there in his articles to Shriek because for whatever reason, uh, the, uh, the people who made fun of Shriek and teased her back at Ravencroft, they still gave her the newspapers, I guess in a way to taunt her, like, look, your boyfriend's going to get killed. But in that article, there was a couple little key words um, or a phrase that showed that, you know, Cletus knew Shriek was still out there and that he was going to come find her. So this gave her hope and she's like, okay, he's going to show up one day. And then he does because after he kills everyone at the police department and, uh, or the, the jail, I'm sorry, San Quentin, and he goes, uh, you know, towards her, he breaks into Ravencroft uh, stealthily, by the way, which is pretty neat. I thought he would have just gone in there and killed everybody, but he sneaks in, kills the doctors, kills some of the guards that taunted Shriek. And then wraps the the chamber, her soundproof chamber, uh, chamber. He wraps it with the symbiote, 
crushes it uh, to free her. And then the two of them plan this big escape where they get in his car, his hot rod that he stole, which was, I guess, a car that she was a big fan of when they were kids. I think someone mentioned to me, Eddie's mullet or someone, they said their son noticed a plot hole in the movie because he was like, well, if they were young and in, uh, you know, St. Estes, and then she went right from St. Estes to uh, Ravencroft, how does Shriek know how to drive? And I can kind of understand that, especially like a stick shift car, but he, she, there's a line where she says, this was my favorite car. This is the car I've always wanted. So I guess you can assume from that that maybe she knew the car well and maybe she was a young delinquent that stole cars. I mean, we don't know any of this because the movie doesn't say it, but the line they do say in the movie is that she's like, oh, he goes, I got your favorite car. And she goes, oh my God, I can't believe you found one. He's like, I know, it was meant to be. So he pretty much got a car very similar to the one she wanted or the exact one she you know, always wanted. And I think that's why she was able to drive it. I mean, I'm winning a no prize uh, saying that because really there's other problems I have with this movie than that, uh, you know, at times. And like I said, I'll, I'll mention them as I'm going through this. But uh, but yeah, this. so now that she's out and, you know, Carnage is Carnage, every time Shriek uses her powers, it pisses Carnage off because he's like, hey, shut up. Like, your powers hurt me because they're sound related. Um, so, you know, keep your mouth shut uh, while, and let me just do all the killing. And this is basically the deal that Cletus works out with Carnage. Carnage is sentient enough, I guess. It's almost like mania, the way it comes out. Because I wouldn't say it's a true offspring. Because it got, you know, he was, uh, Eddie got bit. And the sim uh, parts of the symbiote got sucked out of him. I'm guessing some of the aggression side of Venom maybe got sucked out. The stuff that didn't like Eddie because it was like, you know, keeping the symbiote repressed. I'm going to guess. Again, I'm winning no prizes here for this. I'm just kind of thinking, trying to think uh, about this uh, logically, or at least maybe approach it the way maybe Andy and Tom and Kelly and everyone did. But I'm thinking the symbiote had a side of it that just was really mad at Eddie. And before they did their breakup, that was the part of it that kind of got sucked out. It was like the more aggressive part. And maybe that's what went willingly into Cletus's body and then formed Carnage, I guess. Uh, he never does say, I don't think he says, I am Carnage. I think it's a we thing. That's one of the relationships in the movie I thought wasn't done too well. It works for the movie because it, in, they needed that tension between, you know, Carnage, Cletus, and Shriek. Um, especially in the ending, you needed to know, you, you, I guess they were going for like, we don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Like is, is Cletus going to actually give, uh, you know, Carnage going to give Cletus what he wants or is there something else going on here? Is he just want to kill Venom and, and maybe die, eat him or something? Like we don't really know fully what Carnage's plans are. I thought maybe he would want to bring on the invasion because that was a theory I had way back when is that maybe he would want to finish what Riot started in some way, but he doesn't want to do any of that. There's no mention of anything like that. And so when, when the time comes, and uh, the, the two are fighting like Cletus and Carnage aren't getting along. And the suit you know, says like, shut her up or I'll kill you both. Basically, he's like, you may be a pretty decent host, but I'll kill you both. So it's acting almost like the aggressive Venom was earlier. So that's why I, um, that's my theory on that is that it's just like the bad parts of Venom that got fed up with Eddie. Because once Eddie and Venom separate, this is after, you know, parts of it got sucked out and into Cletus. Um, that suit goes and bonds, like I said, with Mrs. Chen, Donald the Street Man, and then it goes to this rave, which I don't know, I think maybe this is where the carnival scene was supposed to be, because I've seen a couple screenshots, and I think there's even one scene where someone takes a selfie with Venom, and actually there's a behind the scenes uh, shot here that I'll put up, where it's Adam Basil, I think his last name is, and he's a stuntman, he played Venom in a couple scenes this movie, and they show him like with the venom head on top of him and people are taking a selfie that shots in the movie but everyone looks like they're kind of carnival dressed there but meanwhile the very next room is where the rave is it looks like in the background so this whole rave scene where venom is you know taking glow sticks and he's saying i'm coming out of the eddie closet or whatever the, the line is and he's like uh, partying and he's saying weird stuff into the mic like the singer just kind of hands on the mic and he starts talking into it and people clap a little bit and then clap a lot and then they're confused and it's it's a really funny scene because you're like everyone there must be so confused about what's happening they're like who is this guy is it, it you know everyone thinks he's in a halloween costume because i'm guessing everyone there is on drugs or drunk or something like that so he's basically out in the open and he's like i love you humans like i want to protect you but you know like eddie won't let me and they're like what the hell is happening? Um, so I kind of like that. I mean, I think some people probably have an issue with that scene. But for me, I was like trying to put myself in the eyes or in the shoes of someone in that rave. And I'd, I would have been like, what the hell? What the hell is going on? So, uh, so yeah, I just, I don't know. That scene cracked me up a little bit, made me laugh. But after that, the suit goes to Mrs. Chen. It bonds with her. It needs chocolate. So, you know, she feeds it some chocolate, lets it stay on her. And then Anne shows up with Dan and says, we need the suit. 
where is it? And, uh, you know, then it reveals that it's inside Mrs. Chen. And he, and he says, I'll go back to Eddie if he apologizes. So Anne says, fine. So they bond. They go break Eddie out. So that scene we saw way back when where there was a stuntman jumping out through the wall, holding Eddie um, or holding Jake Tamori playing Eddie. Uh, it looks like that actually was She Venom. So She Venom does get another appearance in this. Not in a battle, which really pissed me off. I really liked my idea of having Eddie fighting Cletus, uh, you know, in a scene with the suit and then the suit leaving Eddie for a moment when Cletus is down to bond with she Venom or to bond with Anne to become she Venom and fight Shriek and then go back to Eddie and just have the suit going back and forth between them. I just kind of liked that idea and was kind of hoping we would see something like that. But we didn't. The final act of this movie is, is all in the church. It's that big uh, fight scene in the church, which I was surprised. I thought we would at least get... Uh, uh, like one fight scene halfway through the movie between Venom and Carnage and then have Venom lose and then have him come back in the end. I know that's kind of cliche and stuff like that, but I guess I was expecting a little bit more cliche in regards to that. In this case, we only get one big fight with the two of them at the end. Now, I will say the movie really lets the third act be that fight. So that fight goes on for a good 10 or so, maybe 12 minutes. Um, it goes on for a little while and it goes. there's a lot of layers to the fight because there's a part where Anne is captured, uh, Stephen Graham, who plays uh, Patrick Mulligan, he gets captured. They do this thing where he, you know, uh, Carnage says, all right, what do you need for me to shut you two up, you two humans, Cletus and Shriek? And Shriek goes, well, I want the cop, you know, that kidnapped me or, or that I guess shot me in the face. I want that cop. And then, you know, Cletus says, all right, well, I want Eddie. So the suit's like, okay, I'll bring Eddie here and I'll bring that cop here. And then that will bring Venom here. And that's our, I guess, big plan. We're going to kill Venom. Uh, so that's pretty much their only goal in the movie. So they kidnap Anne and they bring her to the church to lure Eddie and Venom there. Um, but then they also grab uh, Patrick Mulligan on the way. They just randomly run into him. He shows up, shoots Cletus, and Cletus goes, hey, I know you. And he grabs him and puts him in his trunk. And I'm like, does he? How does he know? Whatever. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe there's a conversation off the screen or something. But again, movies need to show you these things. And that's kind of my problem with this is, it is very go, 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 the whole movie. It's cut very uh, quickly. And whereas I just watched a movie recently called Sarah, and that one was an indie film where it kind of takes its time, but I thought it took too much time. This goes fast, but I thought at times it goes too fast. You know, I, I, you can win some no prizes by guessing things, but you shouldn't have to really on some of the stuff. The movie should have provided some of these things, like some of these moments where you understood, okay, Cletus knows that that is Patrick Mulligan, and he kidnaps him, um, but he should go get him. He shouldn't just randomly show up when they're looking for him. That's what happens. They, like uh, Patrick Mulligan shows up to talk to Eddie, and he just sees Cletus there, and Cletus grabs him and goes, hey, my girlfriend's going to want to see you. And then he surprises her with uh, with you know Patrick Mulligan's body, who's still alive, but at the church. She, he goes, all right, let's do the wedding vows. Like, you know, let's do this. I brought something borrowed. I brought, you know, I used, so I borrowed Anne. I brought, I, I, you know, I did this, so this cop in blue or whatever. Like, he was, you know, doing all the, the wedding stuff, and um, which was kind of a funny, cute little thing. But in the end, it was kind of, I'm like, ah, that's just too convenient for, for uh, Patrick Mulligan to show up there. But whatever, they got him in there. <laughs> and so the end fight is in a church, you know, which is cool because the Spider-Man comics, you know, that uh, Venom originally started in a church. So having the end battle here where the bell is getting rung and the symbiotes are going crazy and the and the symbiotes, you know, dissipate and go off of their humans. Um, then they come back to them after the bell's done ringing. So you get some, you know, hand-to-hand -hand fight between Eddie and Cletus. But I like there's a line where Cletus says, look, even without the suit, I'm still Cletus Cassidy. I'm going to cut you open, dude. So he's still a threat. So I like that they said that and there was that line in here. And like I said, Eddie really reveled in playing the character and so did Naomi. I thought they were both over the top and fun and clearly having fun with their roles that when Eddie and all of them were on screen together in this final battle, it worked. Um, in fact, there's a part where Eddie has to like stop Carnage and he grabs Shriek. So he looks back, he sees Shriek and, he, and I'm thinking, oh, he's going to make her scream at Venom and then dodge it and it's going to hit Carnage. But no, he grabs Shriek and throws her into the bell. <laughs> and he makes, the, he makes the bell ring by throwing Shriek right into it. So she like hits it with full force, like gets a concussion and everything. She just like gets thrown right into the bell and then falls, you know, down uh, to, to her death. And, uh, and then Eddie, at that same time, the bell's ringing. He jumps over to save Anne because she falls and he uh, stretches out the suit. And I really love this moment. Uh, Dan came in and poured some fire, you know, some like gasoline and, and lit it uh, on Carnage to distract him. And so that Eddie can reach out and save Anne and use the symbiote. But as they're holding Anne, it was like a very Gwen Stacy moment. 
he's holding her and the suit is slipping, you know, and she's sliding down it, using it as a rope, but it's coming apart as the bell keeps ringing overhead. But luckily the suit is able to get Anne all the way to the ground. And then it seems like Eddie gets uh, killed again or beaten again by Cletus. But then of course, you know, they turn it around and they take down Cletus. And they actually, when they beat Cletus in Carnage, the Carnage suit separates from Cletus and uh, and he actually, you know, the suit, uh, Venom and everything, he, now that he's back with Eddie and Anne is safe and Dan is okay, Shriek is dead. Eddie with the suit goes over and grabs Carnage and eats it just like the comic book. So I saw a lot of people saying, oh, what a waste. They killed Carnage in this movie. I don't think they did. I think he ate Carnage and just like in the comic book and there's maybe a piece of Carnage in him again. Um, you know, he rebonded with it almost like when he took Mania back at the end of the Daniel Way run, he rebonded with it, uh, that piece of sliver that got away. So I think Carnage could still be a thing. I mean, that would be really cool. And we'll talk about another theory I have when we get to the post credit and we'll do that in another episode because I have a theory about a, maybe a version of Carnage we could possibly see to fight Venom which would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, so I don't think the suit is dead. He ate it. So I, I guess you could say, you could say it died, or if you wanted to use it again, you have a way to use it basically. And, and so I think that's what they were going for. But when it was just down to Cletus, Venom picks him up and Cletus starts giving this long villain monologue of like, I'm going to, don't worry, like I'm still Cletus. I can kill people. I can do this. You killed my woman. I'm going to, I'm going to find yours and kill her. And uh, the Venom symbiote goes, ah, this is, F this guy. And then bites Cletus's head off rips it out and eats his brains and eats his head and stuff and then throws his body on the ground. So Cletus for sure is dead and Shriek for sure is dead. But the Carnage symbiote, yeah, maybe they could bring it back somehow um, since it's still inside Venom. So that's the bulk of the movie. That's the full story of the, ma the main plot. Um, at the end, you know, Venom is now going to embrace the lethal protectorness. Even Eddie says, all right, buddy, we're the lethal protector now. We're going to go out and save people and eat bad guys. So I'm like, all right, cool. But, um, but because they're wanted... Uh, you know, Anne is like, Anne and Dan, they go, look, Eddie, you got to run. You got to go. Um, you know, you, I know you want to go out and be superheroes and live your life, but you're not going to be able to anymore. Um, you know, we still have uh, Patrick Mulligan up on the roof, who's still alive, I guess. Although here, there's this weird scene where his eyes light up and he like looks at the camera and because and, they're like, all right, two monsters are at, fighting at the church, blah, 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 you know, and, uh, and one monster's escaped and it's on the run, you know, basically saying that Venom is getting away. But then uh, Patrick Mulligan lifts his head. He's injured. Like he got his like bat. He like got thrown against the wall or something. But he lifts his head up and his eyes are white. And he goes, monsters. You know, and he like looks at the camera. Um, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I was racking my brain. I'm like, some people are saying that it could be Null, like uh, communicating or, you know, or a version of Null speaking through, uh, you know, Patrick Mulligan somehow, even though he doesn't have a symbiote, but speaking through him, I guess. I was thinking maybe it could be something that, that connects to Morbius because maybe in Morbius we'll see vampires with white eyes psychically talking to each other or taking over humans or something. Like, I don't know. I thought it could be a Morbius connection, but other people were telling me it could be a Null connection. So if you've seen the movie now and you want to tell me what your thought is, let me know. What did you think of Patrick Mulligan's eyes lighting up? Someone said it could be him turning into Toxin. I'm not buying that for a second. No, no piece of symbiote or nothing, you know, got on him like that. So I don't see it becoming that. Um, but maybe it could be. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's the third option. Uh, maybe it's either null or a toxin setup, or it's a, you know, it's a, a Morbius thing. So we, I guess, I won't know for sure if it's a Morbius thing or not until the Morbius movie comes out. Because remember, originally that was supposed to come out before this movie. So maybe that's why that scene is in there, so that after you see Morbius, you go, oh, that connects to something that was in the Morbius movie. But I don't know for sure. I'm just theorizing, and I could be dead wrong. So let me know if you think if it's Null, Toxin, or a vampire thing, or something else if you have a different theory. But so Eddie's on the run, and he actually, just like the comic books, goes to an island. Uh, and he's actually hanging out on the beach at the end, looking out at the sunset, and he's like, all right, you know what? This is fine. We'll be here. We'll eat things here. We'll find some bad guys to eat uh, you know, on this island somewhere. And, uh, and we're going to be okay, Eddie. And so it's kind of them ending on a sunset, you know, uh, moment out, you know, happy, I guess. Uh, Anne is with Dan and she's going to have her life. And now Eddie's here with uh, the symbiote and they're out on the beach and they're actually going to do something. Like that's the thing is Eddie's life was pretty much falling apart anyway. He wasn't, he was very lazy at his journalist stuff. So much so that the suit was using its powers to of like memory and all these things, like all these things I've wanted to see uh, the suit do. It was using that, those powers uh, to give to Eddie so that he could actually do a good job on the Cletus story. But Eddie still kind of squandered it anyway. And then Cletus got out, so it didn't matter. So Eddie doesn't have a life to go back to. And now he has the suit with him. 
and they're on an island living happily ever after. Uh, but there is a post credit scene and we will talk about that. I'll do that episode. I'll film it now, but I'll post it up in a couple days. Um, so we won't talk about that here in the comments down below. So save the post credit scene stuff for, I'll try to put that video up on Monday or Tuesday um, after this weekend so that people overseas can see it and have time to see it and then come here and leave their thoughts on the movie itself. And like I said, we'll get into the post -cre uh, credit scene later. But yeah, overall, like I said, a 7.5. I like this movie. It was a lot of fun. And uh, it had a lot of great character moments. And I think the actors, like I said, were more on the same wavelength. And I mentioned some of my criticism throughout. I mean, there is some really bad stuff in here. A couple lines of bad dialogue, even for the goofiness this movie's going for. I feel like there's still some bad dialogue in this movie. Um, some of the stuff is just too convenient. And it's because they were going quick. And I know Andy Serkis said, we made this movie to be short like this. I don't know if I buy that at all, to be honest with you. Not to call him a liar or anything. I think they probably wrote a really tight script. But in filming it, uh, you know, I think a different movie, like always, when you, you write a script, you always make a movie three ways. You write it, and then when you film it, it's a slightly different movie than the written version. And then when you edit it, it's a slightly different movie than the, the filmed version and the scripted version. So to me, I think somewhere in the editing room, some producer or someone came in to get that runtime down. Because there's clearly scenes where people were meant to keep talking that they don't. It just cuts and you get one line of dialogue from Woody Harrelson as like ADR or uh, from Naomi Harris um, that kind of trails out the scene and fades into the next scene and you can tell it was really abrupt. So for me, some of the editing and that and cutting those scenes like I think is a detriment for sure um, and uh, hopefully we get a version where we get to see slightly extended stuff or at least a, uh, a you know deleted scenes if nothing else um because i feel like there's got to be a little bit more maybe not much more maybe only 10 or 15 minutes more was cut but i feel like that could have made some of the difference in some of these character arcs because there are some characters in here where i've seen people in their reviews wondering why ann wayne's even in this movie i know why she's here as i said in my non-spoiler review she's here to help establish the relationship with eddie and basically to say to the symbiote this is you know this is who eddie is he's selfish he thinks about himself sometimes and he's kind of self-destructive and that's kind of the guy he is and so she's trying to explain that to the symbiote so yeah you need her to do that because she's the only one in this universe that has dated and was almost married to eddie and knows all of his flaws so you know so she does serve a purpose in this movie but i think the reason she doesn't have a lot of scenes is because that was one of the only purposes she uh, served in this movie other than being the damsel in distress at the end which like i said i don't like when they do that sometimes to uh, characters like Anne, who i know can hold her own so i wish in the end they did kind of closer to something my idea where the symbiote's going back and forth so Anne can actually you know fight in the final i mean she her and dan do fight a little bit but then once you know venom is uh you know gets the upper hand it's pretty much the rest of the fight is just venom you know taking down carnage and shriek so i don't know i i like the movie overall though i feel like it could be better in some areas and that's why it's a 7.5 and not a an 8 or a 9 or a 10 uh, because there is work that needs to be done but i think they're moving in the right direction and i'm curious to see where they would go with a third venom solo movie because i imagine with the post credit scene again we'll talk about that in another episode but I imagine that'll take the character in a slightly different direction for a while. But I hope at some point they come back and conclude this story uh, and tell one more solo Venom story. I really hope that for sure. So let me know what you thought of this movie. Spoilers and all, everything except the post credit scene. Let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. And thanks for waiting for this episode. I'm glad I finally got up to you guys. And I'll have more episodes to you very soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.